Welcome to online worship at University United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas. My name is Heather Green and I am the Associate Pastor for Children and Families. And we are delighted that you have decided to join with us for worship today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that no matter who you are or where you are on your life journey or your faith journey, you are welcome in this place. Today, we continue our sermon series for the beauty of the earth, and the topic is water. Today, we will also recognize and honor our associate pastor, Reverend Lisa Blaylock, because this will be her last Sunday with us. And today is also Mother's Day, so I invite you now to join with me in a Mother's Day prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks this day for mothers everywhere, and for our own mothers. We thank you for those women who have joined you in eternity and whom we miss dearly here on earth. We thank you for every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. We thank you for all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. We thank you for the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. We ask your comfort for the women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. May they be sustained and strengthened by your love. We thank you for all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but instead reached out to nurture and care for others. We pray today for those who have had complicated relationships with their mothers. May you sustain them with your love and grace. Bless all women who serve as mothers in whatever way that may be. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in our call to worship. Your response will appear on the screen. Creator Spirit, wellspring of our lives, as the refreshing rain falls on the just and unjust alike, Refresh us with your mercy, who knows our own injustice. As the stream flows steadily on, define all the odds of stone and water. Flow over every boundary and border that separates us from each other. As the waters of our baptism washed us and welcomed us, Renew us now in the newness of life and unity of love. As we were once held in the waters of our mother's womb, hold us in the power and peace of your abiding presence.
Good morning. Our scripture reading today comes from the 22nd chapter of Revelation, verses 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, shining like a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and God's servants will worship God. They will see God's face, and God's name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will shine on them and they will rule forever and always. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The season of summer is coming, and where we are here in the Austin area, it feels as if we have already experienced summer-type temperatures. It is hot, it is humid, and we are journeying through this sermon series for the beauty of the earth. Today, water. Words about water are powerful. Deep sea diver Jacques Cousteau once said, we forget that the water cycle and the life cycle are one. John O'Donohue said that water is our first mother. Songs from my own childhood ring in my ears. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And of course, it is Jesus himself who teaches us, whoever drinks from the water I give will never thirst. With over 400 references to water in the scriptures, there is no end to biblical water imagery. The shepherd who leads us beside the still waters, Isaiah prophesying that water is to be poured out on thirsty land. And today, words from the very last book of the Bible. It is a vision, a hopeful vision of a new creation where a river flows with life-giving water for everyone. These are good words, good news. But before we get to the good news, we have to deal with the hard news. And the hard news is that water on our planet is at risk. Now, over 70% of our planet is water, which as an aside makes me wonder why we call this planet Earth when the vast majority is water. But even so, with so much water, water sources are under threat. The vast majority of water is salt water and is heavily polluted by us. Fresh water is available for us to drink, and yet we waste it. Here in the United States, we carry much of the blame for climate change. Streams are drying up and a growing number of rivers cannot make it to the ocean. Species have gone extinct, all because of our failure to steward this gift of creation that we know as H2O. In today's scripture lesson, we are presented with an alternative view of reality a vision of how it could be, a vision of how it should be, a flowing river, and a generous invitation. Let anyone who thirsts come to me. Let anyone who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. This beautiful vision stands in stark contrast to the way things are. The book of Revelation is often doing just that lifting up the wide gap between the realities of this world and God's hopeful dream and vision for the world as it should be. Some people read Revelation and hear a promise that one day we will be able to escape from this world and live in heaven free from all of the worries of this world. But really, Really, Revelation is about uncovering the reality of what is happening right now, right here, exposing the truth of who we really are. In biblical times, it unveiled a corrupt empire known as Babylon, 
Babylon with its injustice and oppression and violence. Today, well, today things are tragically not much different. I recall the number of times in recent years when an act of injustice was called out in our society. And many of us would claim, this injustice is terrible. We are better than this. But perhaps we are learning that apparently we are no better than what is actually happening. That what is actually happening is revealing the truth of who we are. Many animals drink from polluted streams. Millions of people worldwide do not have access to safe drinking water, including right here in the United States of America. Consider the story of Flint, Michigan. It was around 2014 when residents began telling officials that the tap water was discolored. And I'm not talking about a cloudy water or a finicky taste that some people have against tap water. You see residents in some areas of the city were describing water as an orangey, brown, and murky water that sometimes was as dark as coffee and stank. Soon a growing number of people were experiencing illnesses and local state officials insisted that there was no problem. They were saying that the water was safe. It was a pediatrician named Dr. Mona Hana Atisha who helped prove that there really was lead in the drinking water. There really was a problem. You see children who were drinking it had elevated levels of lead in their blood. In case you don't know, it is no minor thing to have elevated levels of lead in your system. It can lead to developmental challenges and even brain damage, pneumonia, and even death. As a loving, committed pediatrician, she was determined to get to the bottom of what was going on. The whole truth of this story isn't exposed until we understand that the water crisis is rooted not only in environmental concerns, but also in systemic racism. You see, for years, in industrial waste was being dumped into the water source where a high percentage of the population was people of color. When residents began complaining about the tap water, local and state officials refused and failed to respond. What became painfully clear was an unwillingness to take seriously the growing number of complaints from people of color about the water that was coming from their faucets. Dr. Hannah Atisha went on to write a book about her experience of this situation. The book is called What the Eyes Don't See, a fitting title because she exposed a reality that so many others refused to see, a reality that many wished to just sweep back under the carpet. What a time, what a time we are living in. And I pray it is a time of awakening, awakening with humility and honesty about the way things are and the painful reality that the way things are is counter to God's dream for this world. You know, it's a good thing to have modern day prophets who speak up and speak out. I do not claim to be one, far from it. Sometimes I am too timid and opt for the path of least resistance rather than stirring things up and making people uncomfortable. But like the prophets of old, God uses modern day prophets and I'm so glad that we have them in this community and in our wider society. God uses modern day prophets to trouble the waters. They call out the tragedy of what is while all along pointing the people of God to a vision of what should be. Let justice roll on like a river, said the prophet Amos, and righteousness like a never failing stream. God offers this alternative to our current reality. In today's world, rivers are polluted, but in the new creation, the river flows clear as crystal. Today, rivers are used to divide us from one another. 
but in God's dream, the river of life flows through the city of God, where all people live with one another in safety and in peace. For by this river is a tree, a tree that provides more than enough food for everyone. And its leaves, says, says the Bible, its leaves are for the healing of the nations. I like how one biblical scholar puts it. They say that in the book of Genesis, we have the Garden of Eden that was created for one family. But here at the end of the Bible, we have the tree of life. And it is a place for all people, no exceptions. And God, God would say that the best news of all is that we don't have to die before experiencing this new reality. We have the choice today. We have the choice today to choose life or death for ourselves and for our neighbors and for the earth. You know, as we talked about last week, the, the issues of climate change indeed are overwhelming and can lead us into despair. But today we can choose life and choose hope and believe that we can make a difference. We can act in small but important ways. There is a host of online resources and articles about how you can cut down on water waste. In my own experience, if you have a school-aged child in your life, they won't hesitate to inform you of how you can be a better steward of the Earth's resources. Don't take such long showers. My daughter tells me, turn off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth. And overwatering the lawn is the number one way that most of us in the city of Austin waste water overwatering our lawns. You may also be called to act in other ways, such as becoming politically active, working with an agency that demands government response to water pollution. You know, we have choices to make, and we have the choice to return to the waters of our baptism, knowing that God gives us the freedom and the power to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, including the gift of water. The New Testament scholar Gail O'Day put it this way, the book of Revelation invites us to move out of Babylon and into the grace of the city of God, which is to say, away from the injustices that we participate in and into God's dream for a peaceful, and just world. A final story, an inspiration. Because at our best, Christians have a history of good water ethics. It was in the 19th century, and a well water throughout the land had become polluted. So polluted, in fact, that many doctors told parents they should give their children beer instead of water so that they wouldn't get sick. Followers of Jesus in Great Britain were appalled that so many people had no access to good drinking water. These Christians cared so much that they became politically active. They lobbied for public drinking fountains with safe, clean water. They were victorious. And when built throughout England, the drinking fountains were inscribed with these very words that we heard today from the book of Revelation. Take the water of life freely. May it be so for all God's children and all living things upon the earth. Amen. We as followers of Jesus have an opportunity now to give of ourselves to God, remembering that who we are and everything we have is a gift from God. Your faithful generosity in giving financially to the work of University UMC, it means that we can continue our ministries of justice and compassion right here in the heart of Austin. You can give online by going to our website and finding the donate button. 
a reminder that as we say thank you and celebrate Pastor Lisa as she moves to a new appointment later this summer, we are taking up a love offering for her. You, again, can write a check to the church and place love for Lisa on the memo section of that check, or again, you can donate online. We give of ourselves freely to God, knowing that God first gave to us. We also offer, offer up to God our joys and concerns. You can share prayer concerns with this online worshiping community and always know that you can contact the church office and visit with clergy if you feel the need. We are here for you. Again, friends, at this time, may we offer ourselves and who we are to God. changing. Individuals come and go in our church life. Today we share our time farewell with Reverend Lisa Blayla, whose time as our associate pastor is ending. Lisa, you were appointed to be our pastor in 2014 and you have served us safely for eight years. Pastor Lisa, your faithful service is a gift to us all. During your time among us, you preached and administered the sacraments. You directed worship and visited the sick. You taught and shepherded small groups and visitors. You worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure everything ran smoothly. You did so much more than any of us can know, and you did it all in the spirit of love. Lisa, we, in turn, we have received the gospel of Christ as you've proclaimed and preached it. We've received the pastoral care that you've provided and all the many gifts of ministry that you've given to us. We encouraged you and we prayed for you and we will continue to do so. You touched our lives and your ministry among, among us will live on forever. University United Methodist Church, I want to thank you. Thank you for the love 
the kindness and support that you have shown to me over the last eight years. I'm grateful for everything that we have shared together, and I'm so happy for the many things that we accomplished together, especially in these last couple of years with the pandemic. I'm sad about the dreams that we have left, unf left unfulfilled. I'm grateful for the many moments that we have shared together, and you will always be in my heart. As I move to a new church in a new place, I'm grateful for your blessing. Friends, University UMC members, we also have a part in sharing our blessing with Pastor Lisa. Would you please share in this blessing with me as the words appear on the screen? We offer our blessing and celebrate all that God has accomplished among us in the years we have been together. We receive your gift of grace and in the same spirit offer grace to you. We are grateful for your ministry of love and justice and for your influence and impact on our lives. Lisa, you are so cherished by our congregation. We will miss you so much. And as a sign of our love and gratitude, we would ask that you take this with, us, with you and remember us, your church family here at university, and move on to the next chapter of your journey. I want to thank you and each of you and all of you for these years together. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you have bound us together for a time as pastor and people to work for your church in this place. We give you thanks for the ministry we've shared. We thank you for your never failing grace with us through these years and for the deepened knowledge of you and of each other. Now we pray be with Lisa and Jeff and their families and with us here at University United Methodist Church. Grant that all of us, by drawing closer to you, may always be close to each other in the communion of saints. All of this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Thank you. 
And now as you go about your week, take these words with you. In the beauty of the earth, may you find rest. In the care of creation, may you find purpose. And wherever you are, and wherever you go, may you know yourself to be on holy ground. Amen.